Welcome to this revision video about parliamentary controls on delegated legislation, which is usually the second question. There are two potential questions, and they are different by only one word, so you need to make sure you read the question carefully and answer about the right type of control. This video is looking at the way Parliament controls delegated legislation. Describe parliamentary controls. The other question is to describe judicial controls, which is how judges and the courts control delegated legislation, and that's dealt with in another video. Whichever question you're answering, you should always start with one or two sentences about why control of delegated legislation is needed. We know that over 3,000 statutory instruments are made each year, together with a large number of bylaws and orders in council. This delegated legislation is not looked at as carefully as bills in Parliament would be. It's also the case that bodies such as the Privy Council contain members who are not elected, so it is important to exercise control. The first most important way of Parliament controlling delegated legislation is through the Parent Act. If there's no Parent Act, then there's no delegated legislation, and the delegated legislation can only be about what Parliament say. So, the Act could state which Government Minister can make the regulations, set out whether the laws can be made for the whole country or only certain areas, and set out the procedures, such as consultation, which must be followed. Ultimately, Parliament can use an Act of Parliament to take back any power they have given through the Parent Act, so they have the ultimate control. The next control is the negative resolution procedure, meaning the delegated legislation will become law in 40 days unless an MP objects and forces a debate and a vote. As it is a rubber stamping exercise, it is used for uncontroversial changes, like the small annual increase in the minimum wage. By contrast, the positive resolution procedure is for more important delegated legislation, as it requires a debate to be had and a vote to be passed. This is a stricter control than the negative procedure, as there is a debate and a vote. An example is the Codes of Practice under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, or PACE, 1984, which relates to matters such as stop and search and how people should be treated in police custody, as these are considered to be important changes that Parliament should know about. Now we come to the two committees. The first is the House of Lords Delegated Powers Committee, which, as the name suggests, only has members from the House of Lords and only looks at bills, which are draft Acts of Parliament. If the committee think the bill should not have given the power to make delegated legislation or that the level of parliamentary control, that means the positive or negative resolution, is inappropriate, then it can report back to the House of Lords to ask for them to change it. The other committee is the Joint Committee on Statutory Instruments. This, as the name suggests, contains members from both the House of Commons and the House of Lords. It reviews all statutory instruments, but it can't alter them. It can draw Parliament's attention to a statutory instrument if it imposes a tax, it has retrospective effect, it exceeds the authority of the Parent Act, or its drafting is defective. So this is after a statutory instrument has been passed by either the positive or negative resolution and is already in force, so all a committee can do is report back that it thinks there is a problem. The last control is that the responsible minister can be questioned in Parliament. So, in summary, you need to include why are controls needed, the controls in the Parent Act, the negative resolution procedure, the positive resolution procedure, the House of Lords Delegated Powers Committee, the Joint Committee on Statutory Instruments, and asking questions in Parliament.
Having reviewed your notes, you should now be able to try writing an answer in 10 minutes to the question, describe parliamentary controls on delegated legislation.